All right, extra strain, here we go. Sorry about that, that was really stupid. Um, so I think that should be working now. Um, so let's try doing something more interesting. So now, for example, we could do um, now that we have that in X1, we can try to add, I guess we could double it. Um, I don't know if that's interesting, um, but we can double it and then we can By the way, this wasn't me trashing the stack. This was me handling overflows, but not realizing that, of course, the simple addresses are not going to be where I expect they are if uh, if you're running out of space. But so I was handling the overflow. It's just that I wasn't checking the errors in the code here, like the test code. All right, um, so let's do a store back from the symbol. And I guess, what? how do they define their... Uh, Their functions here. So store. Why is there a destination register? the store. It's a weird pseudo instruction. Let me make sure I understand what they're trying to do. All right, so they need a temp register so they don't clobber the source. I think they don't really mean RD, surely. Surely they mean like RS, but I see why you need a temp instruction for this. Like you need, um, or maybe I'll call this source. Um, so let's call this dust. So we want to store this um, from some source register and we need a temp register as well. And then we store this offset to the temp register and then Right, so there's the base register, that's what they call it. Um, so there's a base register. What's the right operand order for that? If you put the destination on the left, generally, you would expect it to be something like, like this. Um, let me see how I defined these. So R is one val plus M, and you're getting the value from here. Okay, let's just follow the R is one, R is two order. Um,
and so RS1 is RT RS2 is what we're getting the value some higher level names for these so that the low level things will still use these but uh, then the higher level ones will it's more meaningful all this tech and so r is one and then low offset Temp register, we can just use this one. All right, and let's see. Let's now load this back again, or let's call this a global, actually just to rename it. Um, Let's load that again into another register this time. Okay, so we've loaded that. We now double it. And we now store it out. Well, first we have to calculate the temp register. And so now it should be stored out to memory. And if we load again, we get in the old values. We didn't get in the, the store didn't seem to happen as we expected. So load it, double it. Now we're using, in this line here, we're using x2 as the temp register. And then the next one should do the store. Now we're supposed to load back into X2 that value, and it still has the non-doubled version of it. So it looks like that did not go to the right address. Let's see, so we're calculating the distance from our current address to the symbol, which is the same logic we used here. We're doing the same calculation for this stuff. So it must be this one that's not treating the registers. So this is supposed to RS1, it was RS1 val plus immediate. And then RS2 is the value we actually store out. see what happens when this thing get hit okay so r is one val is 69 which is supposedly the higher bits of the offset uh, immediate
that immediate doesn't look right. The lower immediate, we're doing a backwards reference. Try something real quick just to rule out that possibility. I can make this thing smaller. Yeah, same problem, so that's not it. Um, store word. Takes the address and the value, stores it. Let's see here. One thing that might be helpful is uh, if you look at the RAM, just to see if it winds up nearby and it's like an off by one kind of thing. Um,
yeah, I mean, that's, it's like it's offset in the wrong direction, if anything. So when you're running, it's doubled, and you go to AUIPC using X2 as the temp register. This offset is negative, so it's minus 139, which sounds right to me. Because it's doing Right, so that's what I would expect in a sense. Because the offset is not big enough that we really have to worry about that, so that should be zero, it seems like.
why is this not signed? So that seems to be maybe where the bug is. Is that for us immediates, maybe sign extension is not happening or it's not happening in the right way. Maybe I should take a break because I'm not really in the right frame of mind to debug this kind of thing, it seems like. So the offset is like minus 100 and whatever. We have this big offset, or not big offset, minus 139, which as a unsigned number is obviously huge, and two's complement. That's the problem. Doesn't make sense, though. Let me convert them all into the same thing. I think that makes sense. Even this. This doesn't make sense though. This looks like it's not sign extending. Yeah, so we come back to that. In the decoding of an S immediate,
the lower thing should be a negative. And when it's coming out, it's not coming out negative, or it's not coming out as a big unsigned number, which is the equivalent. So for a 12-bit quantity like that, in order for it to be sign extended, it would have to be that seems like it should be big enough, right? Because it should be so 12 bits unsigned would be 4096, but unsigned would be minus 224 uh, minus uh, 2048. So I guess not. Did we lose a bit somewhere? So we get bet zero through four from starting from bet seven, from five bits forward. Um, here we start at bit 25, and I guess go up to bit, yeah. Code it. This looks wrong. Shouldn't this be seven? Shouldn't this be seven because it's inclusive? Jesus Christ. Okay, it's still wrong. Oh, I'm losing it. I think I need a break. I'm going to just do a few more minutes and then I'll force myself to stop because this is not super productive. That de definitely seems like at least we're getting something with the right offsets now. So if you look at the. So at least it's negative. don't actually read that code again. I'm surprised my property testing didn't find this. So here are five bits. Or sorry, even this is wrong. Right? Bits zero to five. So there are multiple errors there. Okay, I mean, I'm happy I found them, but I was really hoping the testing I did would have found that earlier because I was not a priori suspicious of that code. So I was looking in all the wrong places. I should audit all of that other code because this was actually pretty easy to see by inspection, but my, my, my mental model of that code was 
it had been pretty well validated. Um, let me see if there's other stuff like that. Twelve bits. Four. This is right. Five through ten inclusive is six bits. This is one bit. This is one bit. This should be ten bits. One bit. This should be eight bits. One bit. Well, yeah, I guess they're, but they're not really normal off by ones. It was, one of them was off by two, I think, right? Um, anyway. That happens, but I was hoping to have caught stuff like that already. So that's uh, a little bit nasty. All right, let's get back to something more useful, um, hopefully. Uh, I, I really want to do back patching, even if it's only for trivial stuff. So let's try to do uh, back back patching, um, and we will just use our existing code, but we will change it so that the symbol that we're referring to is defined afterwards in the code. Um, All right, so yeah, we, we, we already started to set up some of the data structures for that. So the basic idea is Some of these are actually a little bit nasty to backpatch because you have to know when you have the offset, you have to know that um, you have to do this m high calculation. Um, but I guess we could just say that's implicit with u, u immediates. I think that's actually just implicit with u immediates. So, um, let's just say that's the case. Um, so basically, what we're going to do is, um, let's say, um, let's say checksum sim ref I think what we're going to say, we're going to say we're referencing something here as a U immediate and we're referencing something here. Uh, actually let's do it from loads first since those are um ref sim um and we say asim sim And we will just implicitly grab the address right from the uh, from this. Um, ref sim, and then we say sim ref u immediate. And this is like I guess this is just an i immediate. we don't have a function called that yet but um
<clears throat> I'm just going to be lazy for uh, sim references and just dynamically allocate them, to be honest. Um, we will do something more like how we're doing this with the, with the devs. We'll do it more like this in the future. Um, but um, so I'm just going to say uh, malloc. Simref um, so make a new symbol reference and I guess what's defined in the structure? address, the kind of thing, and then what we're patching up. Um, I should get used to not doing that. Um, so let's get the sim pointer. And we're going to say the previous ref goes there. And um, that thing goes in the chain. So it has the head ref. Uh, we also have to fill in the address. And that will just be the current address. We link it into the chain. Field name oh I like this. To be honest, we could do everything else in the same style if we really wanted to, but we already made that array, so let's just use indices while we're at it. Um but anyway, so we create a new reference, um, but I think you only uh you only say that you only do this if um if state is resolved, then we don't need to do anything. So this is only for let's make it like that. Um, this is only for unresolved symbols because otherwise it will grab the current address when it's doing the encoding and everything will be resolved uh, or all those offsets and whatnot will be correct anyway. Um, Um, so now when you say set sim here, there's basically two cases. Go through all of these, and for and for each reference, you have to. Let's, let's still assert that. Um, so I'm just going to be referencing it repeatedly. Um, for each of these. So this is a complete dispatch. So we'll sort if we forget any cases.
And so, um, basically, um, what is it called? Dust. Basically, for each of these cases, um, you I guess we can think of it doing different ways. The ideal thing to do would be if the offset is zero, we should just put in zero bits because then we can overwrite them with or very easily when we're doing back patching. That would be the easiest way to do it, but that complicates the encoding a little bit. Let's just re-encode the whole instruction. Um, which is definitely overkill, but I mean, it's also not really expensive. Um, I guess you need to know whether it's a relative or an absolute reference. Um, let's just say they're all relative to start.
let's just check the logic here. So, um, So when we resolve a simple, we go through the reference chain. And just to keep things simple, we actually exploit our encoder decoder round tripping here. So we uh, get the instruction pointer, calculate the offset between the reference and the thing we're resolving to, decode the instruction. And depending on whether it's a low immediate or a high immediate, we uh, do the right kind of math here. And then we re-encode it. And I've actually never done this style of backpatching before because I've never had the benefit of a full encoder decoder um, pairing. And this definitely makes it a little bit simpler, but uh, not as efficient maybe as it could be. Um, so I think, I mean, we can test that. So let's just test the old code so it works. I don't see why it wouldn't. So we have this and we double it and then we write it back to memory location and we reloaded it. So let's try um, instead of doing it like this you instead um, you create a symbol that hasn't been resolved and um, And then maybe we put all this junk afterwards. And then we put this here and we say resolve sim global. Let's try to step, and actually let's do the same here. So here we're referencing the destination, and here we're referencing the destination as well. All right, um, so let's not do the load. Okay, so the sim adder, I think it's because I had an assert. And now we actually don't need that assert. We're just going to return the zero initialized dummy address. So we create a reference. And there, yeah, this is, I think, all correct, including the address, because uh, this is actually the first board of memory we're assembling to. Um, but now, the second reference should hit. And now the reference should point to the previous reference in the chain, which it does. And we're also, the reference address is also at a, another place. Um, and same thing here. This should link into the chain. Um, which looks like it does. Let's go with this one. Now, of course, the question is, does this thing work correctly? So it's unresolved. We now know its address is at 151. And we now have an offset, and the offset is minus 127, which looks about right. We decode that ad, uh, the first instruction that references it. Um, 
actually it's not the first one it's the most recent one which was the store word let me just verify eyeball yeah it looks like this is roughly that um and so we were we will re-encode it and then write it out and that's now a high immediate so this should be a low immediate and then finally a high immediate again Why does it keep going through? Why was there six references? Or however many that was. Oh, th th there were six. I forgot there were six. Because I forgot we reloaded it. But anyway. Um, so now... We have the right address, we mark it resolved, and we're good. So that definitely didn't do anything useful, but um, So heart points to the first address in memory. Should be a load. Oh no, sorry, AUIPC. I think that's right. What is it? Minus 147 sounds reasonable. I mean, there might be some off by one stuff, but. Shouldn't that have been added to the AUIPC operand? So here we're executing this load. And this thing should have done this AUIPC. Well, I guess AOI PC, the PC is zero, actually. Maybe we're doing the offset in the wrong direction now. Yep. certainly didn't work, but um, 
no, that was in the right direction we were doing it. So we're getting the symbol address and subtracting it from our address. No, no, because the ref address is the thing we're fixing up. The ref address is the thing we're fixing up. The adder here is the symbol address. And so if this is, if the reference is, for example, at zero, no, I think that, that, that is the correct order here. For example, if the reference, or not the reference, if the symbol is further in memory, then it's a positive offset. And so if, if, if ref adder for the instruction, if this thing is zero, then some positive thing minus zero is positive. That sounds right to me. Um, should be positive, right? Yeah, this should be positive. Um, yeah, this should be positive. It should be entirely. It's high immediate. Well, within 12 bits. Looks very straightforward. Store this back to memory where we found it. I guess, it, yeah, this is bigger and bigger because we're actually moving from most recent reference to least recent reference. Um, so now we have a high immediate. This will pu push it into some higher value, but it should still be Actually, that thing there really depends. Well, it seems like this would create a problem. No, that is actually what I would expect. There shouldn't be anything in the upper bits.
Let's see here. So this this would be the AUIPC for the load. And that actually shouldn't do anything because the offset doesn't require it, unlike the case where it's negative, where you need that fix up. And now it supposedly loaded it, but clearly it didn't. Um, More confused about where that comes from. Is that the AUI PC? Um, That succeeded in loading, loading something, although it's not clear what it loaded. It's the right thing here. So the symbol I'm referencing is that. Here's the high, that's the low. Here it's high, that's low. Something stupid. First, am I loading the right address here? You see I'm patching the relative offset. Well that is what I'm trying to do. Oh actually I just realized this is one problem. The thing I'm patching it relative to is not the right address. It's certainly one issue. Because here I'm and I'm not even sure this is right. Because should be relative to the AUIPC. Yeah, it should be relative to the AUIPC. Not relative to the address itself. We do have to patch in the offset, but it should be relative to the right base. Um, No, you're right. So, yeah, that is the, well, I, I don't think what you said is, it, I, I, we are trying to use relative offsets for the patching, but I was using the, the wrong base. Um, so let me say, um, let's, let's call these low offset.
so the thing this is what I want to use For this one is the destination that we're referencing. Yay! Okay. So that works. And that works as well. So let, let me just explain that since I don't think I've verbalized uh, what the bug was. Someone on chat was saying, I think you're patching the relative offset instead of the absolute offset of the symbol. I don't, I don't know exactly what you mean by relative versus absolute offset, but it did make me think about something that was the issue. Basically, when I was recalculating the offsets in the back patching, I was using the address of the instruction rather, rather than the base of the offset, which is different for the two instructions, right? Because uh, when we're doing the AUIPC, uh, that's really what defines the base in terms of the relative offset. Um, and so this was giving an off by four calculation. Um, and so now you specify the base explicitly that's used for the offset calculation. Um, <clears throat> and in another context where you want the fix up to not fix up with the offset, but you want to fix it up with, say, the absolute address, um, you would have a different kind of reference, basically. And the fix up code would um, behave differently. Like, for example, if there's an absolute reference, then rather than doing the code this way, it would just maybe put in the actual address directly with, you know, without any uh, offset calculation at all. Does that make sense? Um, okay. I was hoping to get further today, but um, if we can do a little more interesting thing with this, I will consider myself satisfied that we at least got the pack, back patching working. I haven't done a back patching assembler. I did a, risk, a simple RISC-V assembler last year, but that was a two pass. And this is a little bit different because the, the nice thing about doing a static multi-pass assembler is that each pass can be very dumb. Um, it, it basically doesn't really care whether it's doing the first pass or the second pass. It's just doing the same code. But for this, it's easy to get the two things out of sync, as we saw. And in this case, off, 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 out of sync by just four bytes, which is close but no cigar in this case. So that works now. Read it and see if it's reasonable. All right, now that we have that, let's do some control flow, which might be its own, own whole can of worms because 
No, that should be okay. Let's let's try it. Um. Let us um put this a little bit to one side and um let's um let's define a loop counter so we're just going to um, I'm going to write a loop, which um, I guess we, let's say we want to calculate a loop that does something something like this. Um, there's some accumulator, and then you add this in. So this is calculating the triangular numbers up to some value, um, and and this is a pretty simple uh, calculation, but it involves a loop and a, and a conditional check. So it's probably a good thing to try. Um, and so let's say this is the counter and uh, we're basically going to have code that looks like this. Um, and there's multiple ways of writing while or for loops. Um, I'm going to do a, one version that's technically a little bit inefficient, I guess. Because it has an unconditional jump that's not really required. Um, but uh, what you do is you say uh, if actually let, let's first let's first load um, let's load the counter so we're just going to use the counter for initialization let's load the counter and then um, Let's call uh, loop. Here's some here. And uh, we are going to do a branch of equals. And so um, if x1 is equal to x2, then jump to done. And done will be a label we'll define down here. So I'm also going to create a new undefined label. And then I'll say resolve sim done. This will be after everything else. And then inside the loop, we are simply going to um, x3 is going to be our, our accumulator. And so x3 is going to be equal to x3 plus uh, x2. Um, and then we are going to do an unconditional jump. Um, we'll use a pseudo instruction J. Do an unconditional jump up to loop. So the two instructions we have to implement support for is let's do BEQ first. Um, oh yeah, we have to increment the counter point so we also have increment uh yes x2 one and uh for beq emit instruction beq and then we have to emit an offset 
and um, this is going to be a low offset. So we're going to do a rough sim offset. Um, dust. Um, rough low offset. And it's going to be relative to the current address. Um, it's going to be in low. Well, I guess I can just break it out a little bit to make it more symmetric between the simpler and more complicated cases. And so for this, it's going to be get sim adder. Um, dest minus base, and this is only a short range jump, so we don't have to worry about the upper part, I guess. So that's B E Q. Let's do J as well. Um, actually, let's do J A L and then and then implement J in terms of J A L. So this is the jump and link. Um, let me just remind myself of the exact arguments here. So J A L, right? There's a register which is optional. You can set it to X zero, and then there's an immediate which is the offset. Um, So, actually, let me call this target um, rather than dust. Um, and so, this will have a target as well. As I'm writing this, I realize we could actually outsource, we could have a uniform code flow where this reference instruction actually does the, writes the immediate with the right offset and everything. We could actually have it do that so that there's no duplication of code. I will do that after the stream, but it was already bothering me. But since we're doing the fully decoding and encode, re-encoding, we could actually just, um, this code we're doing here, we could always do it in the ref function as well. Like here, we could basically do the equivalent of this, since uh, otherwise it sort of has to be redundantly checked for in, in two places. It's less efficient probably, but uh, kind of a nice thing to do, I guess. Um, but let's just stick with this for now. So uh, calculate the offset. Write it like this. Uh, mid instruction. JL RD um, in is in low of offset. And actually, this in low stuff is technically a no op, but I'm just going to leave it just for consistency. Um, I think there are some patterns with JL where you want to do a long jump and you want to use it in company. Well, in that case, you're using it in combination with a JLR, not JL, I guess. Um, but anyway, so that's the more general thing, and then you have a, uh, a special case, it's kind of a pseudo instruction, where you're just calling this one with x0 and target. All right. So the counter right now it says 10. Uh, let's just step through the code, uh, not, not the, the execution, but the assembly part just to make sure it's kind of reasonable. Um, so 
So this thing here should be able to get a real offset um, because it's already been defined. Now we define a loop here. This is the top. Uh, and here we have a Ford reference. Um, right, so it's unresolved and it should go into the chain. B, Q. Then some stuff we should have already tested and then the new thing here. Low offset. Now we resolve this label. Should be low offsets all the way. Yeah, there. I guess there's only one. And we do this stuff here, which is um, happens after everything else. So let's think about what we expect to see here before we actually see it. So register one should get loaded with the value 10 from this global. Um, then we should do a conditional branch. So x0 is in, uh, implicitly zero initialized, which I could set up manually, but I just assume right now uh, that is the case. And then, so, so, so let's see, x1 is the loop limit, and we could do a countdown loop instead of a count up loop, I guess. No, we, it's easier to do it this way, or the, or the other way, but uh, we've already done it, so let's just stick with it. So x1 is the limit, x2 is the counter that goes up from zero, x3 is the accumulator. So first we load four, that's just for the offset. Okay, so now we have 10, um, and so the next thing should be a branch. So we're at 12. And so we, yeah, we, we don't take that branch because 10 is not equal to zero. Um, and x0 is zero, so this shouldn't increment it. Now we add one to the counter, the index rather. And then we go back up to the top of the loop, which was 12, which is where we started. So that looks good. Um, and we should again do the branch of not equal, so that doesn't do anything. And then we should, and x3 is our accumulator, so now x3 should be 1. And now we increment 2, and we go back up to the top. So I'm just stepping through it, and this should terminate. So now we go back to the top, and now this loop on this iteration should in fact skip to the done loop. And it did. So now it's at offset 28, which is the done loop. And we should now go to the the code, which the whole local local the whole uh, loading the global doubling it the stuff we had before. Um, but x3 should stay should stay that value. All right, yay! Okay, so I'm going to say that this is enough for today. Didn't get quite as long as I want, uh, as far as I wanted, but we did get back passion to work, and we now have both for data and for control flow. We have Ford references and all that stuff, um, and we actually have everything we need to write a simple, real kind of simple code generator uh, for a simple compiler type backend. But um, I think this is enough for now. Um. All right, yeah, I think I'll I'll finish the stream. Um, 
let's say that's enough for today. Um, I'll be working on extending this off stream. So I will, I mean, what do I plan to do? I plan to maybe revisit some of the implementation choices, but then also just put in all the instructions we need. Um, and yeah, just make it more, I guess, more real. But um, the stuff with the back patching and, and dealing with all that crap is, uh, is one of the main things you have to do between, like one of the main differences between a dumb instruction encoder and, and an assembler uh, and so this is a good first step um, and you can see we had a real program running with labels and stuff which is kind of nice so anyway that's uh that's it for today um, i'll be working on this off stream and uh hopefully have something really cool to show um I'll, I'll i expect i'll be checking stuff in today and tomorrow related to this so if anyone wants to follow the repo to see more real-time updates and changes that's one way to do it otherwise i'll be back on friday with um hopefully something much more complete and also a lot more tooling around it like i really want to put in better debugging tools rather than just having this stupid register display uh, having ways to do data breakpoints and, and all these other things that are easy to hack into a software simulator i'll probably be hacking on that off stream so expect to see that next time all right, thanks for hanging out. I'm done for today.